Good morning. It is great to be here on this great day with God's great people doing God's great work. Amen. Amen. You ought to tell your neighbor, it, we are blessed to be here. You ought to tell your neighbor, you look like you're blessed. You ought to take one finger and touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you feel blessed. You ought to lean over and smell your neighbor and say, you smell blessed. Amen. Amen. So, so we're also, also mindful. We're also mindful not only of our old, the oldest mother and the youngest mother and the mother with the most children, um, but we're also reminded of two other kinds of uh, relationships. Uh, those who have um, lost their mothers, uh, especially recently, we recognize that sometimes this is a bittersweet kind of moment and we ask God's comfort and even the voice of your mother to comfort you in these uh, days. Amen. Amen. And then we always have to recognize that there are some people who never gave birth, um, some women who never gave birth to a child, but they have mothered others. And so we acknowledge that mothering is not limited to simply birthing. Amen. Amen. And that we have been blessed. Matter of fact, I'm going to prove it. How many of you all have been blessed by a mother figure who did not birth you? Come on, some see that that's that shows that uh, mothering is a part of a relationship that is built over time. Amen. I'm so excited to be here with you all. I heard I didn't get a chance to to hear the choir, but I heard y'all was slamming this morning. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So I'm glad. I'm also very excited. Um, running back and forth between the campuses. Uh, a couple men uh, stepped up and said they would drive me back and forth. And I am a guy like I don't believe in all that armor bearer stuff. You know, only kings had armor bears. Amen. I ain't no king. And whenever I think I'm a king, I go home and my wife reminds me that I am not the king. Uh, I feel like Rodney King sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But uh, <laughs> just, just y'all pray for me. Y'all know I have so y'all need to understand. I have some serious and significant and continuous issues. I'm just trying to work my way through all my stuff. Amen. So, but I want to thank Deacon Roberson, uh, chair of our Deacon Ministry, for driving uh, me down today. And I like Deacon Roberson. Is he's smooth? You know, he just he drives the speed limit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he don't make no harsh, I mean, he signals 20 minutes before he gets over. Uh, I mean, he just, uh, it's just, it's cool. Now, last week, the driver, he don't let things like speed limits and signals get in the way of getting here. Uh, so, we, it took us about, how long did it take us to get here? 20 minutes? He don't know, he was just rolling. It took us like 20 minutes to get here. Last week, I got here in 11 minutes, so I'm just... So, so what I think I would do next week is have the other guy drive in his car. So <laughs> and we might, we might, we might be all right. Amen. So if you would turn with me, I told you I got some issues. Um, if you would turn with me to Exodus, Exodus chapter one, 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 Exodus what? All right. What verse? I didn't tell you yet. Uh -huh. Let's do verse 17. You know, I, every time I come here, I, you know, I, I take off my tie because you want to be a little bit more casual. Then I go back and I put my tie back on. But one of the things I haven't figured out what to do, I don't know what to do with my hair. I don't know if I should change it. And, you know, I just, I'm just going to leave it like it's okay. I'm just going to leave it. You go, okay, I'm good. Okay. All right. All right. Um, verse 17. I told you I got issues. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them. But they let the boys live. But they let the boys live. Today for a few moments we want to talk about. The unstoppable ministry of mama. Turn to your neighbor and say, mama's ministry is unstoppable. 
Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word, your will, your way. We ask, oh God, that you will open our hearts and minds that we can hear from you. Now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock, our strength, our redeemer and our friend. In Jesus name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. I would surmise to you, I would challenge you, I would encourage us to think about the mother's, the love of a mother is likened to a ministry. <clears throat> the, the love of a mother um, is very much indicative and reminds us and scratches the surface of the love of God for us. Amen? It it, it is not equal to the love of God, but it points us in the direction of understanding the very love and essence of who God is. Does that make sense? Um, and so and so if I could open up with a, a story, I was I was a, um, a senior at San Diego State um, some hundreds of years ago, and I was uh, blessed to have received uh, an, an award and. My mom, I could bring one guest. And so I invited my mom to come. And she was driving down. She was supposed to come down from Los Angeles to San Diego and to be a part of um, this event. And so, of course, um, the event started at like 6 o'clock. And, and it's 6.15. And my mom is not there. And I'm just a little disappointed because my mom is always there. And she's usually on time. And, and then she comes, she walks in. At about 6.25, the program had already started. I hadn't received my um, award yet, but, um, um, but she was there, and she looked somewhat disheveled, and, um, and she sat down, and she had a big smile on her face. I'm you know, like, Mama, why are you late? She's like, don't worry about it. I got here in time to the gate. I said, no, they didn't. I said, but you ain't going to be late, you know? We the only ones up in here, and you got to be late. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm trying to be impressive up in this. Uh, and, and, and she was like, well, I just ran into a little, I had a little bit of a trouble, but everything is fine. I said, okay. And so after it was over, we I walked her out to the car. She was going to drive back to San Diego. And, I mean, back to Los Angeles. And we get out to the car. The whole right front end of her car is just ripped off. The right fenders rip off, one light and half the hood. And I said, mom, what happened? She said, someone hit me. And she said, all I did was write down this woman's information. She said, I drove from Long Beach. We, she lived in so she took from Long Beach and she drove all the way in here with a broken car with one headlight. I said, Mom, why would you go through all that to come for some meatballs and cheese? She says, nothing was going to stop me from being with my boy. I want you to understand that that story is my story, but all of us have a story where mom had to go through incredible odds to get to be by your side. Come on, somebody. And, 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 so, and so I say that the ministry of our mothers is absolutely unstoppable. Nothing can stop a mother's love. Come on, somebody, uh, from getting to us. Now, let me see if I can make sense from a text perspective. Here's the context in the, from the text that I read to you. The context is that Joseph had served Egypt well. Now Joseph had died and it began to list all of his, um, all the tribes of Israel in the first few verses of chapter one. And then it goes and says that there became a king who knew not Joseph. That, 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 that the number of people from uh, the Hebrew people had grew in numbers and, and the people who were in power, the people who were in control were, were concerned about the number of uh, Hebrews um, and how fast they were growing. Instead of working with them, instead of partnering with them, they decided to make life rough for them. So there were external pressures designed to hurt those who wasn't trying to hurt anybody. Y'all with me on that? And so if you keep on looking in the text, you keep on reading in the text, he says that in verse number 15, the, the uh, king of Israel, the king of Egypt, sorry, the king of Egypt says to the Hebrew midwives, he says to them in verse 16, anytime the male is born, you should kill him. 
But every time a female is born, let her live. And so these midwives, these midwives were told by the king, by the uh, local authority, there were rules set in place. There was a decree commanded. There was an edict given that they should follow and do what the king says. Because if you don't do what the king says, the penalty is death. And so the system was set up to destroy. Come on, somebody. It was set up to destroy. But yet it says here in verse 17 that these mother figures, it says that they feared God more than they feared Egypt. Are you all with me? And they said that they decided to save the children or to let the boys live. So here's I want you to read to this. This is important. The, the, the ministry of mom is unstoppable because mom has a big butt. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank God that, she ha- that my mom has a big butt. Now, y'all don't want to say that, do y'all? Let me explain the butt. Because some of y'all looking at me, what's it? In, in verse 17, verse 1, in verse 17, the first word, it says, but. You didn't get it. Society may say one thing. The rules may say one thing. But mom has enough Uh, faith in God that she's always going to say but come on somebody no matter what is stacked against you no matter what is is going against you mom is always going to do something to help you prosper and to live thank God that mom always sees a but does that make sense I I remember I remember um, and my mom taught for years in in special ed and um, and, and, and she worked in the school system, and, and one year that one of my brothers, one of my brothers um, um, was having trouble in school, and they, they wanted to say that according to the guidelines and according to his standards and according to his tests and according to all this, he, he needs to get on some things to kind of calm him down. You know, he's too hyper, so we want to put him on some meds. We also want to put him in special ed. We want to do all this stuff like that. And my mother looked at them. She says, yeah, that's what your rules say, but I know my child. And I know if you do this, I know if you do that, and I know if you do this, he will be all right. That child went on to graduate. That child went on to go to college. That child went on to graduate from college. And I just want to pause and say, the ministry of mom is unstoppable regardless of the rules because she has a butt in her ministry. Amen. Now will you tell your mom, thank you for your big butt. <laughs> that stops all the negativity. Are y'all with me on that? It says, but. Now keep on reading. I want to show you this. I'm almost finished. No, I'm not, but I just want to encourage you. <laughs> it says, but the midwives feared God. And I need you to understand, when we have a fear of God, we never see things exactly the way they are. We always see things the way they could be. <laughs> The second thing I want to show you, it says, it says, fear God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. The king of Egypt did not see the value in those boys. But mom did. Y'all got that? So whenever we are devalued by life, mom always has taught us how to see value in things that were not so obvious to the eyes of others. You didn't get it. If you would have got it, you would have said amen. Say amen. Amen. It's too late. Let me see. So how many of y'all know that one of the gifts of mothering, one of the gifts of motherhood is to be able to see value in things that others don't see value in? Y'all didn't get it. I need to give y'all some. So let me give y'all a couple biblical examples and then let me give y'all some down home, Ivan Pitt, South Central LA value. Amen. Uh, uh, So, 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 so no one saw the value in a Rahab. Rahab was a harlot that was dismissed by society, but God used her to forward his plan. Come on, somebody. No one saw the value. Come on, somebody. In this little short guy who's up in a tree. 
Everybody dismissed him because he was evil and he was bad. He was a he was a, a trickster. But yet God saw value in him and used him. Does that make sense? No one saw value in a, a dude named Onesimus. That's in the book of Philemon. Are y'all with me? Onesimus, his name means useful, but he was acting useless. And he got in contact with God and God used him for useful purposes. And God turned someone who was useless into someone who was useful. Come on, somebody. God always is able to see the value in things that others don't see value in. Y'all still didn't get it. Let me give it to you one more time. There was something called a, girl, a, a, a pearl of great price. Y'all remember that text? Pearl of great price. And it's interesting for where the pearl was found, it was found in a place that did not value pearls. But yet Jesus comes to a place that didn't value pearls and says, I see value in something that that no one else sees value in. Because a pearl is produced by something that is irritant. It is, it is produced by an irritant. And sometimes we don't see the value in things that irritate us and cause us pain, like the woman who issue of blood. And God always sees value and can use all things for the good for those who love the Lord. Does that make sense? Now does that make sense? I did a biblical example. Let me give y'all some down-home examples. Y'all, y'all know, so I don't know about you. Let me see. I, I hope I don't offend nobody. I hope I don't. I don't offend nobody, but I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging your children. I'm not judging my children that much. Um, but I, I'm just always amazed at these young people that buy jeans with holes in them. It just blows me away. That don't, that don't, all right, don't judge nobody. Don't you judge nobody. But don't, because, can, can I, can, hold on. Y'all making me mad because y'all help me. So, so that don't freak you out. So, so like, okay, let me tell you why it trips me out. Not because, it's, uh, not because I want some jeans like that and I, you know, can't get none. Um, it, it trips me out because when I was growing up, we did the exact opposite. When we got holes in our pants, what do we do? Patch them up. We had them big old patches, and them patches were so thick you couldn't even iron your pants, right? The pants would be creased except for where the patch was, right? And then, uh, and so we would patch up pants, and y'all bite pants with holes. It just kind of messes up. We ain't judging. We just don't understand quite yet. And then, because we, we would never throw away a pair of pants with a hole in them, mama was going to do what? Patch them up. Now, watch this. And then when it got to the point where the patch got worn out, we thought we could throw the pants away. No, no, not mama. Mama would what? Cut them pants off. Him them, and she say, them are your summer shorts. Come on, somebody. She always saw value in something that other folks want to throw away. Amen? Isn't that, isn't that where we got the concept? Uh, you know, I, I say this all the time, but this is, I, boy, mamas are incredible. You can go into the refrigerator and say, mama ain't nothing to eat. Come on. I don't see no value or nothing in this refrigerator. And mama go, boy, you crazy. I see all kinds of stuff in this refrigerator. Mama, what you see? She like, you see that corn from two days ago? Pull it out. You see that rice from yesterday? Pull it out. Go in the freezer and get that bone from uh, Thanksgiving. Bring it out. Come on, somebody. And somehow mama was able to take this that was not quite valued and this was not quite valued and put it all together. Next thing you know, she put some cornbread with it. We got stew. Come on. These midwives saw value where others didn't see value. Isn't that the ministry of Jesus? Society says, destroy them because there's no value. God says, I can use them. One of my good friends she always tells me the, the words from her father. And she says that you may be in this situation because of who I am or what I'm doing. But if you stay in this situation, it's because of you. That the love of a mother, the love of parents, they pour something in us. And when it gets in us, it's absolutely unstoppable. Y'all with me on that? You don't believe me. Let me give you this last point. It says that the love of a mother, 
the last point I want you to see, always points us to Jesus and his power. It points us to God and God's power. Look at verse 20. So God dealt well with the midwives. Why? Because they were obedient to God. They feared God. They saw value in places that there was no value. They honored, like uh, Peter said in Acts chapter 5, I'd rather obey God than to obey man. Are y'all with me on that? And it says here in verse 21, and, and because the midwives feared God, he gave them what families? They prospered. Um, and they became what? Very strong. Mm. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. I didn't read that twice, huh? All right, all right. I'm sorry, verse 20. So God did with them, um, and, he, uh, and he multiplied the people, and they became very strong. Thank you for correcting me. And verse 21, and they became midwives, and, the, and because the midwives feared God, he gave them what? Families. In other words, he says they became very strong. They, they became strong because their faith was in God and not in man. Are you all with me on that? Can I just make a free footnote? This I ain't going to charge you for this. This is free. Tell your neighbor he ain't charging you for this. The king, watch this, had one plan, but God had a greater plan. Here's a free footnote. It don't matter who your next president is. As long as God is on the throne. It don't matter. Y'all over here tripping about whether it's going to be him or her or a third party. None of that matters because ain't none of them stronger than God. Whatever God determines, God will bring to fruition. Y'all got to stop telling everybody, oh, if he becomes, I'm going to move here. I ain't moving nowhere. Come on, somebody. Amen. Unless I'm moving to one of his towers. Never. Anyway, um, I'm just saying. Y'all need to stop that foolishness. Come on, we didn't have crazy fun. I ain't excited about none of them. Did I say that? But I'm excited about Jesus. It don't matter who your president is, you need to know who your Lord is. You know who ultimately has sovereign power. Next time someone comes, next time someone comes to you tomorrow, I'm, I'm concerned. You say, I'm not. Amen. That's free. I ain't gonna charge you for that. Now let me go to my last point so I can get on up out of here. It, it points us back to God. Our strength is in God. Our, our hope is in God. And the love of a mother, her ministry is unstoppable because it points us back to God. Are y'all with me on this? Does it make sense? And so what I want you to say is that they, they saved these boys. And one of the boys they saved, and they saved him because they were willing to obey God versus obey man. They were willing to sacrifice their life for the benefit of those who they saw value in. Come on, somebody. In other words, they, saw, they thought that they were worth saving. So they sacrificed for the benefit of those who they thought were worthy. And the same young man who benefited from that sacrifice was a man named Moses. Watch this. Who went off and broke the law, became a felon, fled the city, and lived in the outskirts. But yet, because mama had poured, come on somebody, God into him, he recognized the voice of God. And God was able to use him to free others, come on, as he had been freed. In other words, you have been a beneficiary of God's grace and God's mercy. He touches you, he speaks to you, and you do the same for others. Isn't that what Christ did for us? Didn't Christ die and sacrifice so that we can have life and have it more abundantly? Don't let people doubt and discount the Lord and, and the power of God in your life. He says those who trust and fear God, they have strength. Does that make sense? It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, a good friend of mine, um, I didn't know this, um, but his mother made an incredible choice when she was in labor. They had a choice for her to live, but the baby would not live, or that she would sacrifice her life for the possibility of him to live. He went around for years lamenting and having a hole in his very soul because his mother wasn't there. And one day his uncle his uncle, who was his mother's brother, or mother's sister, mother's brother, said, why are you so angry? Why do you have such a big hole? He says, everybody has mothers. 
around here. And my dad is great, and unk, you and auntie have been wonderful, but there's a hole. Says, has anyone ever told you the story? What story? Your mother willingly sacrificed her life so that you could live. He said, and she did it because she feared God. It's the exact example that Christ did for us. The sacrifice of a mother's love always points us back to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone take your Jesus. Don't let anyone doubt your faith that God is good and his mercies endureth forever. Jordan, there was this, um, this uh, series of theologians that traveled into these urban communities all around the country probably 20 years ago. And they would begin to talk about um, theological um, thoughts and philosophies and they would share and they would call these things the brown bag theological conversations. And they would, and they, they were in Chicago one particular year and this one special um, well um, reputation theologian from Germany had come over to talk about um, his topic. He had just released a book and he talked for about an hour and 15 minutes and the, and the place was filled with all these uh, pastors of multiple cultures and, and um, all throughout the urban part of Chicago. And he, he got up and he talked about and at the end of his hour and 15 minute conversation, he says, therefore, I just proved that Jesus could not be the Messiah. Man, the room was silent. Just like it is now. You could have heard a mouse pee on cotton. He says, any questions? No one said anything. Just as he was about to go back to take his seat, one preacher in the very back of the room got up and said, excuse me, uh, Mr. Dr. Theologian. He turns around and says, yes. He reaches in his, his paper bag and it's crumpling. He pulls out an apple. He goes, he says, I got a question. He said, I don't know anything about Greek. I don't know anything about Hebrew. He said, I never, never been to Germany. He said, I don't have no degrees. As he finished the apple, he said, but I do have, don't act like y'all don't eat like that. One question as he dropped the core back in the bag. and uh, He says, can you tell me if the apple I just ate, was it sweet? And the theologian looked at him and said, that is an absurd, uh, peculiar, and dumb question. There's no way I can tell you if that apple was sweet if I hadn't tasted it. And he says, and you can't tell me about my Jesus if you haven't tasted him. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't let nobody discount your Jesus and they haven't experienced him. They haven't tried him for themselves. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Nothing can stop his ministry. And nothing can stop his love. And that reminds us of our mothers. So may I pause and say, moms, thank you for loving us in our darkest hours. Thank you for celebrating with us in our most climatic moments. Thank you for seeing in us what no one else could see and what we couldn't see in ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for never discarding us, but always being with us. But most of all, thank you that your love for us points us back to Jesus Christ and his love for us. Now I want you all to know that I, I appreciate the fact that we all have wonderful moms or mom figures, but mom can't save us 
for eternity. There's only one way that we can have eternity with God. That is through accepting Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior. It is believing that he died for our sins. That our sins have separated us from God, but his death brings us back into right relationship with him. I want to pray for you. And if you've never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to pray that you will receive that today. I want to pray <clears throat> that if you don't have a church home, that if, uh, if God is leading you to be a part of this church family, maybe you say, oh, I don't want to be a part of Reach Good. Then you can be around part of Second Baptist. Hello. <clears throat> Amen. And so we want you. Now, I need you to understand this, and I want to pray that if you're looking for a perfect church home, this ain't it. It ain't it because Pastor Pitts has significant and serious issues, amen, and that he's a work in progress. But the wonderful thing about God is that he takes us broken vessels. He cleans us and he puts us together in unity and we're able to do more than we could ever do in our own power and by ourselves. If you want to get on God's team and do God's work for God's glory, this is the church for you. Let's pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we thank you for your word, your will, and your way. We thank you for the example that mothers have given us that points us back to you. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to experience one another on this particular day. Now, God, I pray that if there's someone here this morning who's never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, who doesn't know Christ and the pardon of their sins, who have been ostracized and separated from God because of our own selfishness and stubbornness, I pray that you will release us now to accept, to receive, and to repent. I also pray, oh God, if there's someone here today who is not without a church, who is without a church family, that you will allow them, oh God, to unite with us, that we are better together. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. If you don't mind, will you stand to your feet? If there's one this morning who's never accepted Christ as, as your Lord, your Savior, you've never experienced him in the salvation and the glory of that salvation, I invite you. If you've never made him your personal Savior, so maybe you're saying, well, how do I do that? It's simply what you believe in your heart, if you confess it with your mouth, the Bible says you shall be what? Saved. And salvation is yours. It can never be taken away from you. Amen. Is there one this morning? How about someone who doesn't have a church home? You're, you're, you've been here maybe week after week, month after month, year after year. It doesn't get any better than this. This is the perfect time, the perfect hour. You can unite with us. Why should you be a part of the church? Well, the Bible tells us, <clears throat> uh, Hebrews tells us, forsake not the gathering together of the saints. But also, there is power in our unity. Amen. That when we work together on one accord, we can do so much more together. We can make an impact in the community and lives, and we can make a difference in the world. Is there one this morning? Okay, were you one last thing for me? Will you tell your neighbor, I'm so glad he cleaned up that butt piece. All right, you may be seated. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, Reverend. Who? What? So now, what? What happens next? Y'all, tell me, what do we do next? What do we do? We do. The, that's it. It's over. That's it. Oh, who gonna follow that? Shucks. I don't know. All right. Well, let's get ready for the benediction. I want to thank those. Who